Hare Krishna. So this chapter is titled Bhakti Yoga, Devotional Service. And it brings to a culmination the discussion in the middle six chapters on pure devotional service. It's a short chapter, but a very important one because Krishna not only speaks about the qualities of his pure devotees, but he also speaks about how he is so eager to deliver such pure devotees from this material existence. So we'll talk about text 7 from chapter 12. Tesham aham samuddharta mrityu samsara sagarat bhavami nachirat partha maya veshita chetasam Krishna says that for those whose thoughts are constantly absorbed in me, who are constantly engaged in serving me with faith and devotion, who constantly abide in me, for them, Tesham, I personally become the deliverer. Deliverer from what? From Mrityu Samsara Sagara. From this ocean of material existence, which is very terrible. Those of you who have been on a ship in the middle of the ocean when there's a storm, you perhaps have some idea what it means when you speak about the ocean of material existence being full of misery and suffering. It's an awesome experience to be there. Just as I was flying down from India to London, when we were just an hour away from Heathrow, we went through a turbulent patch and the plane really went up and down like this. And there were people who were just little screaming in the, in the plane and it, and it was an aw awesome experience because you never know anything can happen. Yes, yeah, so any time anything can get finished. This, this ocean of material existence is a very terrible place. And Krishna promises that he will personally deliver his pure devotees. And how long will he take? He says immediately, Achiram, I will deliver my devotees very soon. Krishna will not be in a queue or in a waiting Line, or he will not take time to come from the spiritual world to rescue us. Seated on Garuda, he will quickly come, pull us out of the ocean of material existence and take us back. And this is actually the difference between Bhakti Yoga and the other yogic processes. The other yogic processes depend on the practitioner's own abilities, austerities, intelligence and so on. But in Bhakti Yoga, even though the practitioner does use his or her intelligence and does perform some medium level of austerities, ultimately the responsibility of delivering the devotee lies with Krishna. An example can be given of the cat and the kitten. Have you seen how the kitten is carried from one place to another place by the cat, the mother cat. She holds the neck, the nape of the neck of the kitten in her jaws and carries the kitten from one place to another. The kitten doesn't do anything, just relaxes. And the mother does the whole work of moving the kitten from this place to that place. So the devotee is like that, in the shelter of Krishna, and Krishna takes complete care. So the devotee doesn't have to worry. Because the devotee has surrendered to Krishna, Krishna feels extremely obliged to protect and take care and deliver the devotee. On the other hand, those who follow the other processes are like the baby monkeys who have to cling on to their mothers for dear life. Those of you who have been to Vrindavan have seen how the monkey, the mother monkey, carries her young one. The effort is exclusively on the side of the baby. The baby has to just cling on, either on the back or on the underside of the mother monkey. 
and then the monkey jumps from one place to another. So devotional service is so easy, so sublime. All we have to do is to come before Krishna and say, Tava Asmi, I am yours. Not I am you. In Vrindavan we had sometimes these Mayavadi sannyasis would come. They would come every day. They had their little sticks, just like we have our Tridanda, they have their Ekadanda. And they would raise their hand like that and then point to the deity. And I was always curious to know what it is they say when they point to the deity like that. Because when we come in front of the deity, we don't really point to the deity. Or Finally, one of our devotees went nearby and then he asked them, what is it you do there? He said, we come and we tell the deity is Krishna Balaram, we are you, there's no difference. <laughs> I am you. So the Mayavadis, they think that they are the Supreme Lord. I am you. But we don't say, I am you. We say, I am yours, O Krishna. So this is the spirit of devotion in which Krishna becomes obliged and helpless to, uh, to resist the surrender of the devotee. And therefore Krishna takes care of the devotee completely. So with this we conclude the middle six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita which exclusively talk about devotional service.